Now in this example you'll see three different aspects to our surface. You'll see these little pluses right here which represent our point data. You'll see all of these lines connecting our point data and those are what's known as tin lines and then those tin lines are what create our surface contours. So let's dive into that a little bit more. Now the reason why we have so many points out here is mainly due to the fact that uh, this looks like a mountain that was actually shot out here and you can't necessarily get a field crew to uh, shoot individual points with a rod um, you know of course on a mountain so what they did is they probably used a drone with LiDAR and what LiDAR does is it actually creates all of these points as it's flying over it. So you can get a, uh, a drone to go out and go just back and forth across the site and collect all of these different points as it's flying around. In this example all of our point data was entered in directly into the drawing as opposed to importing them with the survey database like we've done in the past. So all of these points are just housed within our drawing. If we click on our prospector, you'll see under surfaces we have an existing surface and the surface is defined by a point text file that we brought into the drawing. So everything again is all housed within the drawing itself. So when we zoom in on our point data, you'll see that each point is connected to each other and these lines are what they call tin lines. Now all of these tin lines create triangles between each of these point vertices and in doing that Civil 3D does what's known as interpolation so the grade is calculated between each of these points and that's what helps to develop our surface contours. In this example again we created our contours based upon point data that we inputted into the drawing but you don't necessarily have to go that route Instead, you can always bring in 2D or 3D polylines and just so long as those lines have X, Y, and Z coordinate data, um, you can add them into your surface by clicking on Contours and clicking Add. Now there are two different types of boundaries. There are destructive and non-destructive. And what these boundaries are used for is to encapsulate our surface. So say for example we don't want to include all of this triangulation in between these areas right here. So there this could be say a lake or it could be um, it could just be an area that, that we don't want to include maybe in our surface volume. So what a boundary will do is it won't include this triangulation. Now the difference between destructive and non-destructive is that if it's destructive then it'll chop out all of these tin lines in between. But non-destructive it'll, it'll include all of these tin lines it just won't include them within say a volume calculation. We can also use the same concept to create an inner boundary as well. So we've got our outer boundary and we can also have an inner boundary save for a uh, existing detention pond that we would like to, uh, you know, we can omit all of this information from our volumes. Lastly, I want to introduce you to the concept of break lines. Now, say for example, there was an existing wall that was right along this area right here. Now with a break line 
we don't want triangulation to cross our wall. If our tin lines cross our wall, it would create an inaccurate surface because it's not accounting for our wall itself. So say for example, if this was a retaining wall, you know, a three foot retaining wall creates an obvious grade change, which our tin lines are not accounting for. So brake lines account for that. 